I'm Daisy Martinez, and I want to welcome you to my kitchen. Today we're going to make a grilled red snapper with sour orange marinade. Then we're going to make breadfruit tostones with ajili mojili, a sweet pepper dressing, and asparagus with a sweet orange mustard vinaigrette. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is innovative design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind. Lunch on the beach. When I think of the beach, I have memories of the smell of the beach, of the tang of the salt water, the smell of the sun baking the sand underneath my feet. And I always think of eating on the beach. A wonderful, gorgeous red snapper, which in Puerto Rico, it's one of the favorite fish to eat. As a matter of fact, we like it so much that the name for red snapper in Puerto Rico is a chillo, which is um, like your mistress. You know, so uh, snapper is, is so good, it's a guilty pleasure. Let's get to work on our chijo. I'm going to take the fins off with my scissor here. Just, and be careful of the, the fins on the back are really sharp, and you want to be careful not to poke yourself with one of those. Okay, we'll do the other side. You know, if you don't want to do any of this stuff, have your fishmonger do it. Just ask them to clean your fish, and they'll take all of this stuff off. Okay, and then I'm going to take the tail off. What I'm going to do is start it with my knife and then finish it with my scissor because it's a little more dense than the rest of the stuff that I just did. Okay? You'll hear me talk about adobo in all its guises and how I like to make my own blend. And I encourage you to make your blend. My dry adobo has salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of cumin, ground coriander. There's a little bit of oregano in there. Go ahead and make your own. You can add pretty much anything you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and rub my fish inside and out with this dry adobo. Now, when you're buying fresh fish, there are a couple of things that you're going to look for. One of the things you're going to look for immediately is the smell of the fish. Does it smell fresh? Fish smell of the ocean. If your fish has an unpleasant, funky kind of, that you, you need to stay away from fish like that. The second thing you do is feel the fish. The flesh of the fish should be firm and not mushy. Lastly, what you want to do is look at the eyes. What you want to see are nice, shiny, bright, clear eyes. You don't want an eye that's cloudy or opaque. That's a clear indication that the fish is not fresh. This is naranja agria that I'm, I'm rolling to kind of break up the juice filaments. They range in color from this to green, and that doesn't mean that it's not ripe. It has a lot of seeds, and it's not a fruit that you could eat like you would eat an orange. It really is sour. I'm not talking even like lemon sour, like the lemonade. I mean, it's a nice condiment, but it's not something that I would eat on its own. And you can see it has segments like an orange, but it has a lot more seeds, and the seeds are quite big. And now the juice of the orange has some of the dry adobo on it, and what happens is now because it's concentrated salt, it's really going to work into the fish. I'm going to add a little lemon. I really want to get the sharpness of the lemon in my fish. And we're going to have beautiful, juicy, delicious fish. I have some plastic wrap here. I'm going to let my chijo sit in the tray in the refrigerator for a little while while I get the rest of my things ready. Okay, so while my chijo is chilling in the refrigerator, I'm going to go ahead and make a lovely asparagus dish. I have some water going here. Asparagus is my mom's favorite vegetable in the whole world. So I'm always trying to come up with like some nice, fresh ways to serve it. Asparagus will tell you where they need to be cut. The woody end is just going to break off where it needs to. And we're just going to take this tough outer skin out. When I was a little girl, my grandmother would pack the most amazing picnics for the beach. And we actually have a film of her, and she would sit at the beach, and she'd be pulling out cold fried chicken and pastelillos and just all kinds of different things. You don't have to limit yourself to having a sandwich at the beach. You really can make a really festive party of it. Let's take our asparagus and leave it there like maybe a minute and a half, and then I'm going to take it out and put it in ice water. And they're going to turn a beautiful, gorgeous green. Isn't that pretty? OK, I'm just going to lower the heat because I don't want 
is blasting. While that's working, I'm going to make a very simple vinaigrette with mustard and some orange juice. Just whisk that right into the mustard. A little salt. A little pepper. And some olive oil. A little bit of salty, a little bit of sweet. Perfect. Okay. And let's take a look at these. How they're doing. Look how bright green they are. It almost looks electric, the color. Isn't that pretty? And really, that's as much as I want to do my asparagus. I don't want to do it any more than that. And I love the term shock because it's exactly what I would be if somebody submerged me in an ice water bath, shocked and not very happy. <laughs> okay, so we'll swirl those around. So this immediately stops the cooking. I want them to be tender crisp. And I'll take these over to the sink where we can drain them. And we'll um, dry them off here on these paper towels. Come on. Just roll them around a little bit. Okay, we can put them right back on the platter where they were. How pretty is that? If that's not making your mouth water, I don't know. Somebody call the paramedics. I love asparagus. And I have my dressing here, which is really quite simple, but very complimentary to both the asparagus and our chijo that we're going to cook in a few minutes. Beautiful. If you've visited with me before, you're quite aware of my love affair with tostones, the twice fried plantains that I love to serve with mojito, you know, that delicious garlicky dipping sauce. Well, today I'm going to do tostones, but not with plantains. I'm going to do tostones with breadfruit. You may not have heard of breadfruit before, but if you remember your mutiny on the bounty in high school, that's what was on the boat. They had all these breadfruit trees. Uh, breadfruit is, in fact, a fruit. It's a starch, almost like a potato. It's very, very starchy. It's got just a note of sweetness. And you want a nice green breadfruit, or a panapen, the way that we call it, and you'll see whitish spots like this, and it's because they dip them in wax, much like cucumbers or yuca, to help preserve it. So, let's get to the business of this panapen. We're going to take the top off, and then we're going to cut it in wedges. And sometimes you'll get a little brown coloring like that. Not a deal. All of that is coming off anyway. We're going to cut the skin off. My favorite way to eat um, panapen is just boiled with either a little mojito or just even olive oil. Love it. Panapen is not something that you would think of for tostones. I never had tostones de panapen until I was older, but they really lend themselves quite nicely to the recipe. Okay, so once you finish trimming the skin, we're going to take the inside. This is where the seeds are. See these little holes? So you want to get as much of that out. I find that it works better if I just lay it and scoop it out like that and then just trim. Okay, and you know what? I'm going to stick these in salt water so they don't turn dark. When it's cooked, panapeng has the texture of a um, boniato, which is a uh, Caribbean sweet potato. The sweetness is not as pronounced. I'm going to cut the pieces now. They'll be easy to fry like this. Okay, let me join them on paper towel. and they're ready for their first fry. And the first fry, when you do tostones, it's not an intensely hot pan, medium hot. We're really not gonna cook them for color. We're going to cook them more or less just to soften them up and prepare them for the second fry. Breadfruit is very much a staple in the Caribbean. I mean, back when all the explorers were crisscrossing those islands, 
they were very much intrigued by it and uh, why not it was inexpensive it was very very tasty and it lent itself to a lot of different ways of preparation you could roast it you could bake it you could fry it you could boil it they eat this in all the islands of the Caribbean, in Jamaica, in the Dominican Republic, all over the islands down there. And if you get the opportunity, if you're on vacation and you, you see it on a menu, try it. Or if you're in your ethnic grocery and you see it, try it. It's really, really quite delicious. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, and I think my tostones are ready. And the way that I know that is I'm going to use my paring knife, beautiful, like a hot knife through butter. And I'm just going to take these out on paper towel. And again, you don't fry these really, really at high heat because you don't want a lot of color on them until the second fry. I have my grill on. And while the fish is on the grill, we'll give our tostones a second fry. Be right back. Talking about beaches, here we are at Coney Island Beach, one of my favorite haunts growing up. The area is experiencing a renaissance, and you can see that with Keith Sand Park, Brooklyn's very own minor league baseball park, and a great way for me to spend an afternoon or even an evening with my family. What's fun at the league park is that you're all up in the action. You're close, you see what's going on. It's really, really great. You get a chance to, of course, buy souvenirs, usually our first stop. There you go, sweetie. Anything you want. Tell Daddy one of each. <laughs> Can't go home without the popcorn. And one of the fun things is that you get to meet the players. They're really very gracious, and they sign autographs for the kids. And it's it's really a fun way to spend an afternoon. And who knows? I may be looking at tomorrow's Hall of Famer. There's a saying in baseball that goes, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes it rains. Well, the rains have come down and halted the game for a bit, but there's somebody here that I think you're going to love to meet. Roberto Clemente Jr., son of the Hall of Fame. I'm, so I'm so happy that you're here today. And we're talking baseball and we're talking family. And, you know, we have to talk about your dad. Do you remember playing baseball with your dad? I actually remember uh, very well. Uh, he had a uh, red, white, and blue baseball glove. It was bigger than me, actually. <laughs> and the first time that I actually grabbed the glove, I mean, it was pretty heavy because I was very young. And I remember him rolling a, a baseball. The first time I, I caught the ball, he said, OK. Well, and we kept on playing catch and being able to go to the ballpark and run around the clubhouse with the players. It was a great experience. Your dad came over to play for the Pittsburgh Pirates. How alienated did he feel breaking ground for Latinos in baseball? When he came in in 55, it was still early, and it was pretty tough for him. He had two strikes against him, in a way, because of his color and the language barrier. When he first got to Florida, the team were not actually being able to take everybody into the restaurants. They were not allow blacks into the restaurant, so they will have to stay back behind in the bus, and they will have to bring them food. And he said, no, I can't take this. I'll this grab my station wagon. All the Latinos and Blacks, we go in the, in the station wagon and go on our own on, on our way. And, and that's how he started. And the 55 was very, very tough for him. Very, but he did it. Yes, and he, did. he opened And he opened the door for a lot of a lot of the boys he today. Was, yeah, he was not the first Latino, but he was actually the first one that really took, got, took it to the next level. Uh, and uh, he, he became an activist. And, and when he established himself in the, in the major league, he was able to speak up and, and, and do his thing. I remember poignantly um, waking up that morning in 1972 on New Year's Day and hearing the news on the radio and my mother just sobbing disconsolate. It was like we had lost a family member that day. And we went to church and we lit candles and I, I saw that reflected in the community over and over again. People that had never met him or seen him even in person had managed to see him on television but had taken so much because he filled he filled our chest you know it was like we we were proud of him and he made us proud much thank you he, he definitely left uh left us with a great legacy and and uh he touched a lot of people and and onto this day he's still touching people and he one of his dreams was to go for the clemente sports city in puerto rico and and uh 32 years after his death is still going very very strong and and uh we cover around 250,000 people uh kids that go through the sports city every year so we're very proud that that That's part is a great project Thank you so much. My pleasure. I am so proud to have met you today. I am not kidding. Thank you. Well, I can't wait to go home and call my mother. <laughs> <laughs> you tell her say hi. Clemente <laughs> 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 So the rain let up, the game continued, and I'm sad to say we lost. 
but I spent the whole afternoon with family, made new friends, so we're going home winners. Okay, I have my fish, which looks to me very, very beautiful. I have all the marinade is pretty much gone, so I know that it's worked its way into the fish, and I'm just going to set that over here for a second while I get my basket. And we're going to maneuver the fish such that, wow, that may be a pretty good fit. Get yourself one of these little nonstick fish baskets. I mean, isn't that convenient? This way you can just, you can turn it right over. I sprayed my basket with nonstick oil spray just to hedge my bets. And just lay it right on your grill. And that's gonna take about 10 minutes. While that's going on, I'm going to make a little dip that I can use to dress my tostones and use with the fish. We're making ahili mojili which is a sweet red pepper condiment, kind of like the mojito that I like to make. And these are really fun to keep in your refrigerator because this way you can change it up. If you like mojito one day, you can use something else another day. This is a very pretty condiment with all the colors and everything. I have a little jalapeno. Do we want heat or not? What do you think I'm gonna say? I want a little heat, I'll compromise. So, not a lot of heat. We're gonna use the jalapeno. And what I'll do is, I'll only use half the seeds in the ribs, okay? So you gotta give a little to get a little, right? Did I mention the Mother's Day barbecue that my cousins and I gave our moms a couple of years ago? It was cooking at its finest. The kids were fishing and pulling the fish out of the water, our kids, and we were grilling fish on the beach, fresh fish. In my life, I've ever tasted fish so delicious. These are ajitos dulces. Don't get excited, it's not a scotch bonnet pepper. These are sweet, they have a little bite, but really no heat. And they look so pretty and they taste fantastic. So anyway, so we had this fabulous picnic for Mother's Day. The fish are like knocking each other out of the way to like jump on the kid's hook. Everybody bought something for the barbecue. Jeannie pulls out this big caldero, a big rice pot, and proceeds to make arroz con gandules, rice with pigeon peas, on this big cinder block grill right on the beach. I had never, I just didn't know what to do with myself. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, I was standing there in awe of her because I, I just couldn't fathom so much control on a grill, not even your own grill. And let me tell you something, it was the most amazing arroz con gandules, rice with pigeon peas that I had. Oh, I still think about that meal. It was a great Mother's Day. Everybody had a great time. Okay, so let's add all our sweet peppers in a hot pepper into a little jar here. And I'm going to add two cloves of garlic and some fresh chopped cilantro, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and a quarter cup of vinegar. I'm using white, white vinegar. You can use cider. You can use flavored vinegar. You know, you just got to play with it. And then I'm going to add some olive oil. These little condiments are something that I really get excited about because you'll make a wonderful meal for your company. And it's like, you know, you'll bring out a beautiful fish or a beautiful steak or some gorgeous crispy tostones. And everybody will say, oh, nice, nice. And then you pull out a, a bottle of this stuff and it's like, whoa, where did that come from? I, you know, I had no idea. A little bit of salt. And the fact that you can now change up your repertoire is going to make you a hit. Okay, and we're just going to shake it up. How pretty does that look? Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, let's give our, our snapper a little flip. Oh, that looks pretty. Great. And our oil is just about ready for our tostones. So let's just um, give them a little whack. I should call my friend Megalina to do this. When you're making panapento, so you just want to get them down to like a uniform thickness. This way, it's really going to crisp up by the time that we're finished. And again, with tostones, the great part about tostones is that you can do it ahead of time. You could do the first fry ahead of time. And then right before you're ready to serve them for your guests, you just you pull them out and you're ready to go. OK, so here we go. Nice hot oil. Okay. We're going to cook these until they're nice and crisp looking and golden brown. 
It's all about the crispy when it comes to tostones. And these are coloring beautifully. Let's turn these over so I can get some crispness on the waffle side, the side that we smell. Okay, my mouth is watering from tostones already. Look at how beautiful and golden and crispy and crunchy and delicious they look. The color of, oh my goodness, caramel almost. Okay, now that we have gorgeous tostones, we'll just let them drain on paper towels, and as soon as the fish is ready, we'll be able to eat. Okay, we've got fish happening here. It looks ready, it looks flaky, and it looks shiny and beautiful. Oh, this is the part where my mouth starts to water. I'm a mess right after this. Let's see, let's sneak a ladle under here, a little spatula right under there. Excuse me, senor fish. Beautiful. Okay, and we'll just get rid of that basket, ouch. Okay. Okay, so you want to find the gill cage, and then I'm going to cut right from there and down. Let the fish spine tell you where you want your filet. Work it right up. I have a friend who actually told me that he can do this with a spoon, and boy, am I impressed. I'm going to have to get him to teach me that trick. And here we go. We're going to slip our knife right on the spine, just tilt it up a little bit. Okay. Oh, this fish is so moist. Beautiful. Gorgeous. I want some of these fabulous tostones on my plate. Look how golden and crisp the edges are, just the way I like them. And then I'm going to have some of these asparagus. Let's just toss them for a second so they're nice and dressed. I'm just going to lay. And then I have my ahili mojili. And I'm just going to drizzle some of that between the tostones and my fish. Some of these. Wow. Does this look like a sunset on the beach to you? Look at those colors. Okay, I have three things to taste this time around. So I'm going to try the fish with the dressing. That's beautiful. Mm. I have the sweetness of the peppers, the freshness of the oil, the tang of the cilantro. Mmm. Mm. And now for my asparagus. I like to eat asparagus like this. Mm. You can hear them crunch. Beautiful. And these are lovely cold, room temperature. I will invite you to spend an afternoon on the beach with me. Until then, Buen provecho. All of Daisy's recipes and much more will be contained in the cookbook Daisy Cooks to be published in the fall of 2005. To receive exclusive pre-publication recipes and for further information about Daisy and her cooking, please register at daisycooks.com. There is no obligation when you register at daisycooks.com. Daisy Cooks was brought to you by All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is innovative design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind.